Hello and welcome back to Office Boy Builder. Last time we filmed this and it's basically just the next day and I mentioned that I'm going to be making uh, a hanging light fitting out of this collection and assortment of uh, hanging lights from IKEA. So these are the actual fittings themselves. They're 1.8 meters long each. We're going to be doing ours in varying sizes. Got a really nice copper. Uh, let me open one up and I'll show you a really nice copper base as the unit, which doesn't really, it kind of contrasts a little bit, but we've got quite a bit of green and copper and green going nicely together. So that's the that's the base unit that's going to sit on, on here and then the lights will hang down. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a cleat system so that this can hang. So whichever side I decide to be the front will be the front on the other side of it. So let's, let's assume this is going to be the back. What I'm going to do is effectively create draw runners and a draw stop on this so that when it's up there I can lift the whole thing and I can slide it in place on the on the rail so I'll attach a rail and a stop to the back and I'll put a rail and a stop on here and they'll all slot in nicely so effectively there'll be a stop here and there'll be a rail on this one and a corresponding rail will be attached to the ceiling and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like a French cleat. If you haven't seen a French cleat, it's where you have a section of wood like this and a corresponding section of wood like this and they can slide over one another or latch onto one another but they obviously won't uh, you know, move because they hold each other in place. This French cleat system is the principle behind how wall, wall cabinets attach. They have a little hook that then pulls itself back in against the wall. I haven't got any to hand to show you, but that is effectively it. So that's, that's what I'm gonna create for this here, except these will be on three sides, or at least two sides, and the back will then slot in like that. The reason for having this cleat style system is that it means I can mount all of the lights on here, I can lift the whole thing in place, and slide and slot it on as I've said but it means that I can do all the wiring ahead of time and I can leave the coil of wire up there enclosed in these you know in within the walls of these side partitions the cleats all of the wiring can stay in there the wagos can stay in there there'll be no strain on the cables you know they'll all be nicely fixed in place you know the central cable will be here or here, wherever it ends up being, it doesn't really make too much difference. But you'll never see any of it. All of these cups will be sitting on here. There'll be a hole drilled through, hidden underneath the cup, and all the cabling will go into that. So it's a really nice, effective system. I've not seen it anywhere, but I've, I've been spending a bit of time thinking about it, and I think that's the best, most effective way. These are basically just little bits of rubber that were left on here from the quick grips that I used to clamp this because this was two 11 mil pieces of ply glued and, glued and clamped together. I'm going to be varnishing it and staining it and then it will match that. And I'm going to do a nice black edge on this as well. I have just gone and glued up a third layer on the off cut that I had from this which I will be using for the cleats. So don't know if my earlier explanation was clear, but I'll have one cleat on the wood. So I'll have two cleats on the wood and two cleats on the ceiling, and then it will slide through like a rail. And obviously, because this one is opposing this one, this will stay in place. Other options that I kind of looked at and toyed with are way more complicated, completely over-engineered, and a waste of time, and very difficult to achieve. So this does mean that I want it nice and deep, though, so that I can keep it a little bit of a way off the ceiling and have a kind of nice shadow effect the whole way around, which I'll achieve with this. So I was toying with the idea of putting a curve on this and I thought, well, if I'm going to go to the effort of staining it and putting the shadow on, same as we've got on the wall over here, I actually don't want to do that. I want to keep it as similar as possible. So I'm just going to paint the edges. 
I have squared this thing up so it's, it is perfectly square to itself. So actually, I'm just going to paint the edges black and then stain it. And then I will start putting these, doing the wiring for this. So you can see there, black, it's still wet paint, so it's a little bit shiny, but it has the same look and feel as the wall. So once the paint is dried, I can sand this and that smudge, obviously, and sand the edges and I can apply the coat of oil. What I'm going to do in the meantime is very loosely lay out where I want these. It's a little bit arbitrary to be honest, but I need to plan because I've got different sizes. So we've got some that are really big and round, different color big and round, different shape big and kind of funny. So these are some of the bulbs, really nice. So yeah, it'll look good. Turning my attention to the wiring on this and it does almost look and act a little bit like a Wago. So obviously this is the power, the neutral and the live. And then it's got two slots there for the live and two slots for the neutral as well. So I can wire them and it, the power can come in and then go out for the next light. So that actually works really nicely because I can effectively do it as one big radar. I don't need to add any Wagos or anything like that. All of this can just run up and through and uh, the cup will effectively sit on one side and this wiring and all the rest of it will sit on the other. Actually really very helpful and quite smart. What I can do because this cup is so big, what I'm able to do is drill a hole big enough to just slot this whole thing in. I can then attach this to the wood. So imagine the cup is there that on one side of the wood. The cup's on one side of the wood. Nice big hole drilled through so that I can pass this whole thing up and in. I can then secure this down like that. Put some screws in there to hold it in place. And all of this will get hidden. The big hole will get hidden by this cup on the other side. The other beauty of this is this here relaxes or unscrews and allows me to change the length of the wire and then retighten it and the ratchet there pinches the cable and takes the strain. So I'm able to set all of this, set the lengths of these and change them without having to take the light fitting off, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really pleased with that. So we've set the lengths of these pretty much arbitrarily actually, but all slightly different. Rosie's enjoying catching them. So all of these are gonna be slightly different lengths, but we've kind of leveled the tops up here. And what I've done is I've loosened this, pulled the cable through, so all the excess comes to this. What that means we can do is we can actually coil up the excess of this cable inside the cup and then just pass you know, the last little bit through the hole that we drill it'll be nice and big give it lots of space and we've still got the excess length there if we want to change it then we've got that option right we are now figuring out which of these we want where and the way we've done that is that we have arbitrarily picked spaces now it's it's not that arbitrary actually we've got a big one here and we've got a big one here because when they're because when they're down you can see how close these are to one another. Now they are obviously going to be different lengths, but we still don't want them too close to one another. Also this shell one, we've made sure that the shell uh, cup is right at the edge of this so that the edge of the shell and the edge of the bowl don't come into contact with one another. And on this side, we have a small one that's gonna be underneath, it'll be short. And under here, we have a small one that will also be short as well. So they shouldn't ever touch each other and they'll be kind of randomly spaced apart. So it should, I think it will look quite nice.
back down in my workshop, which has basically become an abomination. While we've been doing the build, it's just a dumping ground for stuff. Uh, it's not insulated, it's not weatherproofed, like, you know, decent quality tools getting rust on them. So I'm going to actually be later down the line knocking this whole thing down and rebuilding it. Um, keeping some elements like the workbench that I built and some of the storage and the racks and everything, but I'm going to be rebuilding this thing because, I mean, it's just awful. I'm just quickly down here to use the table saw, which I've moved back down here. I had it in the house for the build, but I'm using it less and less so to make some space in the house. I've put it back here where it lives. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting the cleat system on this. So I'm going to raise the blade up and I'm going to flick it to the angle that I need. The way that you do this, you can effectively cut two cleats at, at, at in one go. You set the angle on the blade. When you then run it through, you have one side and then the other side. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm effectively going to end up with two sets of cleats. So I'll have this pair and this pair. And this line will be cut through at an angle this way. This line will be cut through at an angle this way. And then I can split down the middle. Got my two pairs and they will perfectly overlap one another. So what I'll do is I'll take it back to the saw, cut down the middle, and then I'll cut the angle. So I'll end up, I'll cut straight down the middle, then I'll pass this one, and then I'll pass this one through here at the angle. This is then the outcome. One piece of wood was split in half, and then these halves were cut at an angle. And now this will slide along here, like a drawer runner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply, I'm going to sand this to get it nice and smooth because there's a lot of friction on this. So I'm going to get this really nice and flat and smooth. I'm also going to rub it with a whole load of wax, just normal candle wax actually, just standard wax and that will really help make that glide. These are all sanded now, heck of a lot smoother. The other thing I've done is I have just marked, just so that I don't end up accidentally pairing the wrong ones, I've just marked them where they overlap like that, just so that at a very quick glance I can see where I need them to be. Laid out like this, rub them down. Now, just a normal candle wax, normal bit of candle wax like that. I'm gonna rub back and forth along here and just completely coat the whole surface because that will smoothly glide one over the other. It's not really possible for me to do it and show you because I have to hold this and I'm using my phone. So uh, I'll just quickly do it and I will show you what the outcome looks like. You probably won't really be able to see anything though, to be fair. I've used quite a lot of this actually on here now. So it's really, really waxy. You cannot see it at all, but it is. it really does glide these two surfaces now slide very very easily over one another and they didn't before so that's outcome achieved which is really good what I'm going to do now is chop them to length I'm going to be using the end stops so that's why it made sense not to chop them before chop them down to length and then I can start attaching them to the back of the board which I varnished last night and left to set up so this is where the cups are going to cover the holes and the gaps. So this is the back side here so you can see how pale that is versus that. So I can then attach attach the runners along here and put it put the end stop wherever it is that I want it. Laying this out on here now, making sure that this is pointing the right direction so I know which way goes where. Knowing that these two are paired together. What I've got to make sure is that when this is screwed into here or into the ceiling and this one is here it doesn't conflict with the holes too much now the hole is big enough so that I can get the unit through but the unit does sit over to the side so this one here sliding across this way is okay just just okay it'll be easier on the other side because there's a lot more space over there but 
ideally that would have been over here but it is what it is it will it will work the other thing i think i might end up doing is painting this edge black as well just to increase the kind of shadow uh, i don't really want that showing through this edge here just to be super super double clear and with myself but also for you guys to see that's the piece that's going to be stuck to the board this is the piece that will be stuck to the ceiling board and ceiling and that's because this angle here if I come down like this you can see with this piece stuck to the board and this piece stuck to the ceiling this will effectively hang the, the board here will hang on there and on there it can still slide in and out but it won't go anywhere if this was the other way up like that uh, sorry if it was if this had been flipped 180 degrees it it wouldn't work as well because these could both slide this way whereas having it this way round it holds itself in place it can't slide this way because of this and it can't slide that way because of that so that's the way to do it if I had accidentally screwed this one to the board or if I screwed this one to the board and this one to the ceiling it would still work it wouldn't be a problem uh, it, it really doesn't matter too much you just have to make sure that these diagonals are opposing each other I've just seen that glue has delaminated ever so slightly but it's not um... oh actually yeah, a piece a piece of the wood has popped out but it's fine that's not that's not a problem so yeah I can now screw it in place glue and screw this in place onto the board and then I'm going to have to figure out how to put the ceiling ones in place. That, I think, is going to be the hardest part, to be honest. If you have any thoughts or suggestions for how to make a jig to set this up and to put this on the ceiling, I would be all ears. Obviously, it won't be any use to me because I'll have done it by then. But for other people on the video, if you have any suggestions, jot it in the comments. Make it super clear and easy for people to follow um, for how to set up a cleat when you cannot see or easily get to the back but you need them to line up nice and snug. A crucial element for this is to make sure that the distance between here and here is exactly the same as the distance between here and here going this way. So in my case it's 31 centimeters. See 31 there and 31 there. That's really, really important because if, if it's narrower here or wider here, then it will pinch when it slides. So they have to be parallel one to the other. That's really crucial. Back on the wobbly tower. And I've made sure that this is obviously not switched on, not touching it anyway, but just in case. I'm now placing this up here and I've made this whole thing a little bit wider than I should have done. You can see that because the cleat here to sit evenly is actually not touching the ceiling. Now, I want this to be this wide and I want it to be this long, so I'm not gonna cut this down. What I'm effectively going to do is this portion of the cleat holds this in place. This portion of the cleat that is attached to the ceiling will be completely on this flat section here. So all I need to do is extend the height of this flat section on these over here. I'll show you that in a second once I jump down. Right, as I was saying, this section here, this flat section would be on the flat section of the, of the strip above. So all I need to do is make this bit longer, higher. And so that way uh, it can, this can still attach on at the right height and this can just be extended up and reach the ceiling. It actually makes things easier for me, I think, to then attach it on the ceiling. The other thing is we've had to shorten the lengths of all of these because when we just held one up as a tester, the longest one hung down so low that I would have been able to touch, touch the bulb, which isn't ideal. So yeah, going to make a quick adjustment to this and we'll then be able to attach it on. So I'll show you what that looks like in one minute. Right, I have 
mark this up on the ceiling there. I don't know if you can see, I've put where the marks are, where I want them to be, taking special care to measure the side to side to make sure that I've got that lined up. I have then pre-drilled three holes on each of them. And I've got some nice big 100 mil screws that will go through and are really meaty. So they will go up into the ceiling above. Now up there, I have put a big, uh, I think it was six by three, it might have been a seven by three the whole way along. So it's very, very secure. Yeah, you may remember that from the previous video. If not, I will post a link to that up here showing what it looked like before we put all of the insulation in here. So I'm just gonna quickly zip those up and then I can try sliding this on, then I can take the whole thing off and sort out the wiring. What I've done is I've suspended the board between two chairs so that I can then set this up. This is what I'm looking to achieve here. This sort of tension on the cup so that it holds itself nice and snug and firm. This I can screw in here using a little kind of 10 mil screw, something like that. That will hold this in place and take any tension that would be on the wire off the wire and hold the cup in place so I can now basically do that with all the rest of these and secure the cables and then I can lift it up what I'll do is I'll also bring all of the cables together nice and neat find a place to terminate them and I'll then leave a space for the wire so all of this all of these will be connected there's two two ports so live in and live out neutral in, neutral out, and I'll earth them all as well. I mean, there are no earths on this, but this is double insulated. So it's insulated there, but also all of the cups have a plastic lining on them as well. And then a plastic grommet there. So it's, it's very secure, it, it, it's good. Just need to get the tension right, bring all the terminations together, and then that can be attached up there using that live cable that'll come in. Okay, so first the power cable will come in here, go to this one, come out to this one, and I'll go over to here. And then this is the final one on the chain, so that's why this one only has one. So that's the start and that's the end, or the other way around. It doesn't really make too much difference actually. Actually, so that's all done and I have also shortened all of these so that they are nice and close. Oddly the ratchet on that last one there seems a bit loose and I don't really know why but it's close enough. I'm, I'm happy with it so I can actually pretty much get this up and in place now. All of these wires will be tucked out of the way. They'll be contained on the top here. There is no pressure or strain on any of the cables. So yeah, that all works, looks nice. Although it does look like a rat's nest, I haven't had to chop or cut any of them, so all of the full length is on the cable still. That's what it looks like from down here. Can't see any of the fittings, can't see any of the fixtures. Just need to put these on now. I think it's look, gonna look quite nice actually, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's come out so far. Sort of looks like with all of the bulb sections in. I think I might raise some, lower others, but that's what it looks like. I'm just going to go and turn it on, see what it looks like when it's on. And that's it fully on. Obviously it will relax down a little bit, give it a bit of time. 
that will relax down, all the cables will stretch out a bit. But I'm pleased with that. I wonder whether it might benefit from one or two more. Maybe up in this corner here and maybe in the far corner there, but I'm very happy with how it looks. It'd be nice to see how, how it brightens the room in the evening. Looking forward to that. And this is what it looks like in the evening. I have to say I am really very happy with it, but I am going to make a few changes, or additions I should say. This corner here, we're going to put another big uh, one of these, possibly actually one of these other small ones actually in this corner up there. And the other thing that we might do is, if we can, we might find even smaller still, ones that are smaller still and spot them in up around here. It adds in a surprising amount of light, which I'll try and demonstrate now. So if I switch those off and I switch that off and that off, you can still see there's quite a lot of light here from this, which is really nice. And that's then gone. So that's the dark and that's it then coming on and it, and it really does add a decent amount so I'm very happy with how that's come out I want to add a little bit more still but it's following that kind of the yellow soft ambient light the other thing I'm going to do is when these lights come on I'm going to add a strip along here so they wash up the ceiling there I think that'll really help just kind of tie it in I like the way this ties in here with the black surround and the plywood there, which ties it in very nicely with the plywood wall over there. So a lot of continuity follow through with that, which is really nice. So that is the light fitting video finished. I'm not gonna do another one on this. Hopefully we're gonna be able to get this glazed. I, just need, I have just applied for an amendment to planning because originally that was going to be plastered and painted and I've just been so busy doing other stuff, I haven't actually been able to make that amendment. It also costs about three and a half to four grand for the, for the windows. So uh, stay tuned for that. We will hopefully get that done and then made good. Uh, this room is now finished. We've got it carpeted and we've put all our furniture in here, which is really nice. Very happy with how this came out. I didn't film it because it's just a carpet going in a room, but really happy with how that has come out. And then the final thing which you haven't seen, which I didn't video actually, is this. This is the laundry. Let's get switch this off for a second. So this was custom built. I made this housing here and this one here. I worked, uh, I used Cutrights, which is a fantastic business if you've not heard of them or not used them before. Cutrights is a great way of basically specking up what you want and they cut it to size and they use all different products so this is a melamine finished osb i just got one little bit where i need to buy some edge banding to stick on the front there but this custom housing works really nicely and we've got a countertop that i'm going to be cutting and putting in here and some cupboard units that are going to go in there as well so this isn't quite finished again i didn't film the process for this because honestly it was a little bit boring actually it is just putting together units that I've had pre-cut. I didn't cut them, I didn't make them myself. I literally spec'd it up, put it on their website, they sent it to me all pre-cut and I put it together. So I didn't bother doing that. Uh, but we are gonna have a countertop in here, a nice black quartz one that'll wrap, it'll wrap around this and come along. So stay tuned, I will be showing you that.